Ciao everybody, you are about to join me, my friend Chloe and my friend Shu on an Italian food adventure extraordinaire. We're going on a journey of local food production and tradition like no other. And along the way we will meet passionate producers and lots of animals. And maybe, just maybe, will I milk my first ever cow along the way. Join us and you have been warned, this video will make you hungry. From London to Verona and from Verona to our first stop in Trentino, Riva del Garda. As the name suggests, it is located in the north of the world famous Lake Garda. I just wanted to oh, really? say that we just arrived and we're all so excited <gasps> <Yeah>. because <laughs> it's it's, we've just kind of been chatting. Oh my god, it's so dark. And then we saw like Garda like wow. appearing. <laughs> we've never seen anything like this. Oh my god. Wow. German girl eats Trentino sandwich in Trentino. <laughs> Our first dinner in Riva del Garda, Panem, a place where bread lovers' dreams really do come true. I mean, imagine this, they make the crunchiest fresh homemade bread every day and with smoked cheeses and meats they create sandwiches named after famous places in Italy. We obviously chose the Riva del Garda one, which is this one, and the Trentino one. I loved them both. And did I mention how crunchy they were? I'm just amazed by how crunchy the bread is. Like, I hope you guys can hear it. Like, listen to this. And then it was time to say Buonanotte, Riva del Garda. How to start the day right in Italy? Obviously with coffee. <laughs> okay, so we start. <laughs> I'm Camilla, nice to meet you. Just want to explain you a little bit about our family, our company. Welcome to Om Cafe, a local family-owned coffee roastery. We learned many things, such as it takes 20 minutes for a coffee bean to be ready for espresso. And honestly, it was lovely to see how proud and passionate Camilla was about her business. Seeing these gets me really excited because I remember making this as a child. <laughs> so I remember my mum telling me like, don't you want to go and grind the coffee in one of yes. these? And I was super excited and I was grinding the coffee and then you kind of like, it comes in this little drawer and then you, you know, make the coffee. But also at the same time, does it make me old? <laughs> Comment below and let me know if any of you remember grinding coffee in one of these. I feel like I can do this, but I'm probably gonna, oh my God. Yeah, I think that should be enough for one. Hello. Are you Hello. sleepy now? You won't be sleepy after, I promise. No. We've got six coffees to try yeah. and then after we're going to be like... Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> wait, wait, let me see you. I think I just made a horse noise. That sounded like I neighed. <laughs> That's the only sound that came out. Oh, cheers. Oh, cheers. cheers. That'll be two. Strong. <laughs> this I was like just going to say mild. This is the least strong in the <laughs> How many coffees can you taste until you start making horse noises? <laughs> well, Chloe only had about two, but even Shu and I left Om Cafe happy, inspired, and well, let's just say charged, which is good because we were about to get cooking. This is Antonella. She left her office job in banking five years ago to found Passione Cucina, where you can learn how to cook the food of Trentino. 
Her business is now super successful and I felt excited to learn from her. We were about to get our hands dirty and create a three course meal like you have never seen it before. So the first dish that we are making is called the priest that choked because he ate too much of it basically. <laughs> Next, we made carne salada rolls. Carne salada translates to salted meat. And at this point, we were unaware of how much the people from the region do love carne salada, but more about that later. We then also learned that you actually should not wash mushrooms because it does make them soggy, so always brush them off when cooking. And next, we made olive bread the Italian way. <laughs> So I think we're about to eat the first part of what we have just cooked and it's literally the prettiest setup and also we've got the mountains in the background. Ready boiled our little spinach rolls. I'm super excited, I love spinach. So they definitely have like a dumpling feel, but dumpling in the way that I'm used to it in German. So like um, a bit more dense. Amazing, so good. What is the best thing to do after a lot of food? Ah, cycling! <laughs> hey, hey, Hello. okay. Hello. Are you ready for bike? Yes, ready. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> And also, I forgot to say, we are cycling to a winery. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Where else would you cycle to, right? <laughs> are, we, are we going? Oh my god, yes, we are. This way? have arrived at Madonna della Vittoria. I think I've said that correctly. And actually, apart from wine, they also make olive oil here, which I actually think is potentially a little bit more interesting because I don't really know how olive oil is made. So I'm very excited to find that out now. I think afterwards, we're also going to have a tasting. So I'm also very excited about. Comment below, actually. Do you guys know how olive oil is made? Okay, so the way olive oil is made, Step one, they go in a little box down here, then they get collected and washed up there, then they get separated from stuff like leaves, then they get pressed in here, and, and then, um, he's just gone somewhere else, I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> From what I remember, the oil then goes into this machine and is mixed for some time with water to keep the temperature just right, until it is then separated again in this machine and comes out ready to taste. Olive oil tasting 101. <laughs> First, you have to warm it up for 40 seconds and he said he doesn't recommend to have it with bread because, you know, it's gonna just not have the right taste and the bread has its own taste. So I'm gonna do this for 40 seconds. Okay, now the best part. Do not drink it like a glass of water, but do this. No, sei piante. <laughs> and then you taste it. This is not. This is very light. Eh? I was just yeah. gonna say it's very mild, very mild. I just almost got it in the wrong. <laughs> I need to practice. Piece of bread. I'll have a piece of bread. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Lens is definitely soaked. The next day we said goodbye to Riva Delgada and moved higher into the mountains to an area called Comano Terme. First stop, waterfall. So we are just walking through the gardens and they're playing really relaxing music here and in the background you can already hear the water trickling down 
and the effect that has on me right now. So I feel very, very zen. What a way to start the day. So the spring for this waterfall is coming from a lake which is hidden eight kilometers far away in the mountains and eventually it comes down here and it finishes in Lake Garda and it's called Cascata Varone because it flows through a little village called Varone. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong Italian. So <laughs> Chloe's just been inside and she is a little bit wet. I've literally like, had a shower <laughs> as has my camera rather worryingly. <laughs> so I will obviously for you guys go inside but I might be very quick so let's go. Oop, yeah, spraying already. <laughs> She's here. She's got a rain jacket on. <laughs> Sandy not prepared. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> yep, <laughs> Lens is definitely soaked. That is awesome. I'm sorry, oh my god, let me actually clean this lens first. I was in there for maybe a minute, maybe 30 seconds. It was very beautiful. <laughs> Um, it was very powerful and majestic and I do definitely recommend coming here <laughs> But yeah, be ready bring a rain jacket or a umbrella not like me So if you thought that learning about olive oil production was interesting then settle in for this one balsamic vinegar This is Luca potentially the most passionate producer we met on this trip and he works at Acciataia Balsamico Trentino. To make balsamic vinegar, you need grape juice tramina, he told us. Cook it for 85 degrees and move it through 11 different barrels over 11 years. Wow. Right, okay, so um, I'm very excited to try this. A very, very special balsamic vinegar. This one is not as old as the one I was speaking to you guys about before. This one is about nine years, is nine years old. So. Mm. Oh wow, it's almost, it's almost too sweet for me. It reminds me a lot of a syrup. We were just saying that it does go very well with desserts. So kind of sprinkled a little bit over strawberries maybe and basil. That would work very well. We did come here to find out about the balsamic vinegar production, the cheese production, the oil production, the wine production. And who would have known that now <laughs> we just sat down to try the wine, the wine, balsamic vinegar and all of this. <laughs> food. This is before lunch. This is a snack here in Trentino. So I made myself a little taster plate and he said obviously to try the balsamic vinegar with the cheese and with the meat. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Because I have to say the balsamic vinegar on its own was good but very strong. So I'm excited to try it together. Mmm, like okay. So it adds something very sweet to it. Almost like you would in England have chutney with it. Feels very high quality. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. I mean, grazie. <laughs> to pre breakfast, pre, pre lunch. <laughs> For snacks in Italy. Ciao, Luca. This really was brunch and I was happy I managed to hold myself back from eating more because here we were about to have our first lunch in the mountains. At this point I noticed that we had moved higher into the mountains for sure. We all agreed to call it mountain food and on the table we had things like ricotta dumplings, olive tagliatelle and oh there next to Chiara was our second carne salada of the day you might have spotted it before on our brunch table already oh and in case you're wondering Chiara works for Visit Trentino so that means she could have all this food literally every day she balances it with hiking though she told us and now what is happening here Sandy and Shu breaking bad not quite, but we are about to find out about donut production at Erika Ice. And well, you know, safety first. Okay. Comment below. We're ready. Fashion police, yes or no? <laughs> this will give you nightmares. <laughs> How many donuts 
or Catherine do you produce per day? Per day we can produce 100,000 100, cups. And who eats them? Ah. <laughs> Easily <people> done. <laughs> Thank you. Not only do they make Krapfen at Erika Ice, they also make, as the name suggests, ice cream. And they get their milk for the ice cream from different sources, but one particular source I was about to experience, let's just say, hands on. Hello, Sandy subscribers. She's currently washing her hands because she is about to milk her first cow. I'm Very exciting, exciting, so I'm going to help her document <laughs> this know, experience. I think he's ready. <laughs> welcome guys, welcome to the next stop of our tour. So we are about to see some of the happiest cows here in Trento. There's a few things that the guys here at the farm do to make the cows happy. First of all, they listen to classical music. They have like a little bit of a playlist between Beethoven and Mozart going. They also don't feed them any unnatural food, so everything is natural. They give them muesli and things like that. And also no antibiotics, which I think is super important. So if they're sick, they get homeopathic medicine and they impregnate the cows with this dude behind me there. Don't worry, I was just as confused as you probably are right now. Look, I am no cow expert, but from what we saw, the cows did seem extremely happy and relaxed, whether this is the classical music or not. I loved experiencing this farm, and yet again, I love the fact that they only sell locally, to Erika Ice, for instance. So, well, here we go, let's do it. As someone who eats dairy on occasion, I just felt like I had to try and milk a cow. Would you have done this or have you ever tried it? Well, I was glad I did and just in case you're wondering, they do not milk each cow by hand, obviously, but interestingly, the cows here at Maso Pisoni only give around 25 liters a day, whereas industrial cows have to give up to 60 liters a day. We then also tried their cheese and after so much excitement, I slept really well, ready for extreme sports the next day. I'm not joking. Probably my favorite day of this trip is about to start. As you can tell, we are going cycling. We're gonna cycle 40 kilometers in the mountains to explore various things across the road. Um, we're actually gonna go on proper mountain bikes, e-mountain bikes, but still, I can't wait. Let's go. As if mountain biking wasn't enough, this was a very special mountain bike tour called Kilometro Zero. And what that means is that on that tour, you explore local farms and food that has traveled exactly zero kilometers. Amazing. Here we go, purple potatoes, nut cake, local fruits and donkeys. Yes, donkeys. I am coming for you. Okay, so hello. We are about to go down this road that you can see behind me there. It's a little bit more off-road. It's also going down, so I was just told, keep your balance at the back, keep your arms and elbows loose, and down you go. So wish me luck, I will see you after. <laughs> wow, this is difficult. I'm here, I'm alive. <laughs> I am improving, it's still super hard going downhill on a mountain bike <sighs> okay guys so everything is worth the fear if you come to a place like this one 
and you see this amazing bridge and the views and the river. I'm so happy. This is definitely the most beautiful spot we've seen on this trip so far. After all of this action, I definitely felt like I deserved all the food we ate along the way. And here are some of my highlights. This is Chuiga, a sausage local to the region of Trentino and made with pork and turnips. And for me, it was the epitome of mountain food, I'm not gonna lie. They did serve it with purple potatoes, which tasted earthy and wholesome. And for our first dessert of the day, we had tiramisu made with purple potatoes. Odd, but I liked it. And a little later, we then stopped in this cute village to try award-winning nut cake. I tried to steal the recipe. He obviously did not give it away. He was very protective. And I now saved the best part of the tour for last. So the current situation <laughs> is amazing. I'm, I've got loads of new friends. Lots of <laughs> Hello! Do you want to be in the video as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Do you want to be in my video? <laughs> okay, so as you... <laughs> As you can see, we have come to a donkey farm. There's lots of donkeys around me right now. And basically what they do here is they have 60 to 70 donkeys to produce milk and beauty products, but in very, very small doses. So essentially the donkeys spend all the time, all day outside, little baby donkeys together with their mums. <laughs> and then during the night, the mums you know, give a little bit of milk so that the local people here can produce it and live of it. Um, and again, locals come here to buy it mainly. They don't sell to any big supermarkets. They just come, uh, they just sell to locals who live in this beautiful valley. And they come and buy face creams and a little bit of donkey milk. I've never actually tried donkey milk, I don't know. Apparently it's the most similar one to human milk. What do you think? We tried a few of the local fruits and jams they also produced at the farm and then slowly headed home and I had it straight into bed. As for day five, the theme of experiencing Trentino hands-on was about to come true once more. Oh my god, I actually can't see. Okay, someone else take over. Oh. Nope, not a vineyard, but it is a walnut farm. Meet Rodolfo, the proud owner of Maso Pra Cavai, a family-owned rural nut farm and also a bed and breakfast. We learned a lot about how to prepare walnuts, but the real highlight was learning how to harvest them. You're not gonna believe what you're about to see. Basically, there are two methods. One involves a tractor and the other one is, well, let's just say, manual. Okay, just gonna check the harvest. Um, I can see it's quite a few nuts here. So I think, I think it's been a good year. <laughs> so apart from the machine beating, you have just seen, or machine shaking I call it, you can also manually beat the nuts, and we are just going so up the hill to do that. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying. It's actually so steep. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> oh my God, I feel like such a city girl. <laughs> go, shoot, go, go. <laughs> oh, I did it. Yes. Go, Chloe, go. It's so much harder than you. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I'm crying, it's in my eye. Oh my god, I actually can't see. Okay, someone else take over. No, you know in the Olympics when they go like, and then they jump? Oh, yes, jump. You know? <laughs> ah, oh, I got one, I felt it yeah. on my hand. <laughs> the dream jump I never knew I had. <laughs> 
thank you. After a successful harvest, we have come inside to crack open some nuts. We are going to prepare honey and walnut mix, basically, which over here is enjoyed with, guess what? Cheese. <laughs> This was fun to make, I really enjoyed it and in case you are wondering if Chloe is okay, yes she is now, but she did suffer for a little bit, you might see her in the background here with a tissue, but I am sure the homemade gnocchi we had together with the family made her feel better and probably the schnapps we had too. Amazing, they fall apart in your mouth, so soft, very intense in flavour, I feel like they taste a little bit more potatoey than I'm used to. It's amazing. Enjoy everybody. <laughs>Thank you so much for watching. Do also check out Shoe's video and Chloe's blog. And <laughs> Root. <laughs> I will see you in my next adventure. Please do not forget to subscribe and like and comment. You know the drill. Bye-bye.